Itzhak, a boy who loved the violin. The story of young Itzhak Perlman by Tracy Newman. Pictures by Abigail Halpin. The Perlman's tiny apartment seemed ordinary. A single room walk up with just one window looking out onto the traffic of downtown Tel Aviv and no bathroom of its own. Yet a little kitchen radio transformed this simple home. Graceful classical symphonies, lively klezmer folk tunes, soulful cantorial chants, rich melodies and vibrant rhythms filled this home and the ears and soul of the littlest Perlman, transforming baby Itzhak too. When Itzhak listened to music, a vivid rainbow of colors appeared in his mind. Hues from dark green to red to yellow, music brought Itzhak intense joy and tears. Itzhak loved it. By three, Itzhak knew he wanted more. He had to make music. Young Itzhak had already chosen the instrument whose magical sound he loved best. He begged his parents for a violin. But for an immigrant family whose dinner was often a piece of watermelon and some bread, musical instruments were a luxury. Still, Itzhak pestered and pleaded. Finally, his parents bought him a toy violin. At first, little Itzhak laughed with delight, but he quickly recognized that his violin didn't sound like those the master violinists played. His music wasn't as clear as Yasha Heifetz, as intense as Isaac Stern's, or as enchanting as Ida Handel's. Disappointed, Isaac gave it a whack and threw it under the bed. Then the unthinkable happened. Polio swept through Israel. Four-year-old Itzhak became infected with this deadly disease. He lay hospitalized, fighting for his life. After a few weeks, the doctor announced that Itzhak was going to live. But Itzhak's body was weak. He couldn't move his arms or legs. At least he could go home. There were so many tasks to relearn. Raising his arms over his head, holding a book, grasping a pencil. The work was hard slow, painful. Other four-year-olds might have given up. They might have said no. They might have stopped trying. But a steady melody played inside Itzhak, encouraging, energizing, empowering him. A year of stretching, straightening, and strengthening paid off. Itzhak could move his hands and arms again, but his legs remained paralyzed. Itzhak would always need crutches or braces to walk. Crutches or not, Itzhak didn't just sit in his room. His family moved to the suburbs, enabling Itzhak to get to school on his own. They chose an apartment without stairs so Itzhak could move around easily. Crutches even helped his soccer game. To Itzhak, these adjustments were no big deal. When you're four years old, you get used to things very, very quickly. Running around the block, riding a bicycle, jumping off a diving board, all these ordinary things Itzhak would never be able to do. But Itzhak made an extraordinary choice. He didn't become sad or angry. He knew the melody inside him gave him a different gift. Music got in his ears, gave him goosebumps, sent a chill through his body. Recognizing his passion, Itzhak's parents bought him a new violin. Crutches meant Itzhak couldn't stand like most violinists, but Itzhak declared, I don't have to play it standing up. I can play it sitting down. A bigger challenge was his big fingers, fitting them into the small spaces between the strings. Still, he figured out where to place them. Itzhak began studying the violin with a strict and old-fashioned teacher. Do what I tell you. Don't ask any questions, she said. Itzhak had to practice for two or three hours every day. Making music filled Itzhak with joy, but practicing didn't. So Itzhak found some unusual ways to manage. Sometimes he would sneak outside, watching construction trucks pour concrete. Other times he boing, boing, boing his bow on the strings, only pretending to play. If his parents asked why the room was so quiet, Itzhak explained that he was perfecting a new method, practicing inside his head. Yet young Itzhak developed exceptional skills, including his brilliant, bouncy spiccato, vivid, varied vibrato, speedy staccato strokes, 
playful pizzicato plucking, smooth, slow legato. It's a secret. He talked to the music, imagining the personality of the piece, what it looked like, what it felt, what it meant. His way of living, breathing, becoming the melody transformed his music into something extraordinary. At six, Itzhak was performing with orchestras in Israel. By the age of 10, he was giving solo performances. Itzhak's warmth, joy, and enthusiasm became well known. Some people doubted that a violinist could play well sitting down. Itzhak knew he could. Later, he explained, I can't walk very well, but I'm not on stage to do walking. I'm on the stage to play. Obstacles were ordinary things I, Itzhak just had to get used to. But the irresistible melodies vibrating inside his mind propelled and fortified him. And so he refused to give up. At 11, he wrote to the National Symphonic Orchestra, the Israel Philharmonic. I hereby request that you give me an audition to play. I have the following pieces ready. Please answer as soon as possible. Sincerely, Itzhak Perlman. Itzhak waited and waited, but the Philharmonic never responded. Then came an extraordinary opportunity. The world famous variety television show host, Ed Sullivan, whose show was watched by millions of families each week, traveled to Israel. Mr. Sullivan was looking for new acts, so Itzhak auditioned. Itzhak later admitted that he played pretty well for Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan agreed. He invited Itzhak to come to the United States and perform on his show, knowing just four words of English, mother, father, and good morning. 13-year-old Itzhak boarded a plane with his mother for New York City. On November 2nd, 1958, Itzhak sat on the stage of the Ed Sullivan Theater, smiled his broad smile, propped his violin under his chin, and began to play. Watching the young, round-faced boy, the audience became mesmerized. Within days, bags full of letters poured into the show, begging for Itzhak to perform again. His life would never again be ordinary.